So far, the news is good over Yeah. Mm. I'll just um, send Steve Rustin a message. Thank you, Linda, by the way. Oh, yeah. So I'm just making just starting. Yeah, we're going to get the Early days, yeah. Yeah, early days. <clears throat> I like the design of the website, Steve. <clears throat> Thank you. I'll try to keep it as uh, simple as possible. So. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Then where you find the time? <laughs> uh, uh, it's because I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all retired. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, it's that old adage, I have no idea how I had time to do the stuff that I used to do when I was working. So. Yeah. Uh, here's Steve. Uh, is is my is my microphone live or is it? Yep. Yep. It's good. Yeah. But is it live? Live. That's what I'm trying to get at. Or is it? Say something, Bridget. What? No. 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 We, we can hear you, Doug. Uh, uh, and also, the worst thing is ripping the sponge when they're trying to get it out. Sticking it out of the tin Ooh. is where most people come unstuck because the camera sticks to the edge and it's really yeah, difficult. I'm trying to. Uh, interesting I'm trying to. Oh, this I know what's what's cool. Used it on this. I'm having a drill. The first step is with a syrup, tip 30 grams of cross the sugar into a pan. And add two tablespoons of water and place it below heat to stir until the sugar dissolves. Increase the heat and cook to a golden caramel. Is that background the caramel noise? Is that, Steve, is that yours? Have you muted me, have you? No, I just did for it. Yeah, just it's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's not that I... Uh... Yeah, it's, it's, it's Steve's that's um, got the background noise. So. Multitasking, so, you and my own on the syrup. It's yeah, Steve, there's a little background noise. No, I think that won't be on hold to me for a while. Mm -hmm. Remove from the heat and go to the boring boring water. Stand back as caramel. It's a bit Steve Russ, can you hear us? And then I'll reduce that to simmer up yeah. until it is syrup consistent. Yeah. You don't need to hurry up. I'm fairly happy. It's looking a bit long, so it may stay syrup. Just That's not me, Steve. How yeah. do I get on to, how do I get onto this thing where you mute your um, microphone through the? So down the bottom left hand corner of your screen, if you put your mouse down there. Now I'm onto the very structural stage of this one. Let me just fix Steve. Butter and sugar, and you beat it until it's light. Okay. And a little bit of flour as you go. 
because it can just curdle a little bit. Mm. I've heard of and not have a dry sponge. Prepared mold, prepared mold. Sponge so line on the washer just to make sure I can get more. Do you find the syrup? So, sorry, Dick, did you manage to Yeah, I'm just, yeah, um, because when you first come up, it gives you a whole list of things like earbuds and things like that, and it says, okay, um, can you hear anything else? No? I, I can hear your, your voice clear as a bell, so. You can hear me, that's okay then, right, okay. okay I don't know that Steve can hear us. Yeah. Very well. I Can you hear us, Steve? Yes. Ah, good. All we had was, <laughs> was um, set like a TV or something in the background, as well. It's yeah. Like. Who's got the TV going somewhere? Uh, it's on Steve's end, so. So it's obviously going through your microphone, Steve. How is it? Oh God. Yeah. Uh, Chris. Chris, can you turn the telly down? <laughs> That's all right. What what are the uh, oh. the joys of Zoom? <laughs> I thought having earphones it would um it it, it would be all right, but obviously not. Yeah, well, it's good for you hearing us. <laughs> Can you hear it? <laughs> <laughs> Can uh, you still hear it? Uh, only just a little bit in the background. It's not as bad as it was. Hang on a minute. What? No, you shut the door. Down Can you hear? I I can still can hear. You, can you hear that now? I can still, could still hear Chris's voice in the background. Yes. But not the TV, no. Is it a problem? No. Right, okay. No it, it would have been before, but that's why I was muting you just to, to see if I could work out where the noise was coming from. So. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Shut the door, Steve. <laughs> well, haven't you got a door? Talk with Steve. Steve who? <laughs> Steve who? Steve Ross, I mean. Uh, Chris, Chris was asking Steve who. So. <laughs> who are you talking to, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> no one. <laughs> uh, that's fun. I think I'll probably cut this bit out of the um, the recording. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I might leave it there. I don't know. I'll see. Ah, uh, why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of fun. So we should, should be getting a few more people shortly. Well, I hope so. Yeah. Neville, have you had much rain? Spring rain your way? Not really. Uh, we're, quite we're pretty low for this month. Uh, and we're, it's probably falling all, all over here and not getting your... your, your <laughs> oh, no, we've got brilliant sunshine here. 20 degrees today. Nice. Hi, folks. Hello, Martin. How are you? Okay. Hello, Val. Hey, Martin. What time did you go to bed today, Steve? <laughs> I, I got up at five. Great. Now, what time did you go to bed? Oh, what time to go to bed? Um, uh, about midnight. <laughs> did that come through okay? What I sent on it? I... Yes. Yeah. Um, it worked. Oh, ah, yeah, good. It did. So, I was just having a look. Uh, Neville, we've got a top ch uh, forecast top of ten today. Ten. Yeah. That's winter. Yeah, I know. It feels like. It. <laughs> Hi, it took me a minute Hello. to get my audio on. <laughs> uh, how are you, Val? Good, thanks. Hello, Val. How are you doing? Hi, how are you up there? Good, thanks. Virus free. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, I'm above Auckland by about uh, 12, three quarters an hour, so we're not Auckland, luckily. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <clears throat> of course, the South Island's completely free. <laughs> yeah, you're lucky. Yeah. Huh. We just passed 200,000 deaths today, and Trump says that the virus affects virtually nobody. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I heard. Ridiculous. Terrible, isn't it? Yeah. We just had a interesting seven-minute talk from our, our Prime Minister. 
Are you getting locked down again? Totally, totally nothing from what I can see. He's he's only doing a, a week lockdown, isn't he, in the uh, UK? Six months, he reckons. Six months. Yeah, but you can you can still go to pubs until ten o'clock at night and mix. Yeah, got to drink up and get out quick then. <laughs> yeah. All the idiots who are causing the problem will drink all the drink before ten o'clock and still go on drunk. Yeah, that's right. Good morning, hey. Paul. Good morning, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. Do you have your coffee? <laughs> Tea, I had. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> a, a man of quality. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what was that, man? It's done still standing upright. Oh, yeah. It's done yeah. six hours the weekend like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... Uh... I got a good you night. You got the sleep. big Harold's medal for that one, mate. <laughs> I got a good night's sleep Sunday. <laughs> yeah, me too, actually. Well, I confess I attended the Sunday morning talks in my pajamas and I went straight back to bed afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't notice, Bob. <laughs> I spent until two, two, maybe 2 30 in the afternoon after the AGM trying to sort out all the rest of the the um, the, 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 the auction money because people were ringing up and their emails going everywhere. Oh my God. That, that's still been going on. I'm glad we only had 20 lots. I'd have been murder otherwise. I thought that went very well, all things considered. Yeah, yeah it was a bit of fun. Uh, good morning, Steve. Good morning, Ed. Good morning. Finally got on. Yeah, that's no, good. You've already been through today's presentation, though. Ed. Yeah, that's the one that I did for the um, New South Wales Minsock a uh, week and a half ago. So. It's been a few years, Neville, since I last saw you about. Yep, like, more like about a de decade or two. Fifteen years. Fifteen? Started. Gee, that's a long time. Yeah. Long time, Martin. Yeah. You going all right there, Martin? Just about. <laughs> Still upright, still breathing, so that's all right. <laughs> but better luck, I might get back into Henderson Choir mm -hmm. again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, did a good presentation the other week. Oh, he did. He got, me, he got me enthused. <laughs> <laughs> it's the danger of these meetings, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the big problem is, well, I think I brought about 24 kilo back with me from that quarry. And um, I managed to smuggle it through customs somehow when I got to Auckland. And uh, the girl at the, the desk, I was there about three or four hours too early, so the girl on the desk was very nice to me. And she didn't charge me any extra. Oh, well, you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, had, I had customs in Melbourne in the mid-90s. Um, uh, they wanted to know what... Uh, if I, because I'd, I'd mentioned I had some rocks in my um, luggage, and they wanted to see if there's any soil on them for biosecurity. Yeah, so they yeah. made me unpack my bags, and then when they saw what I had, the entire row of fifteen customs agents all gathered around and had a little show and tell, and held everybody like with three planes worth of people held up for twenty minutes. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I, I arrived at Perth. That was a good customs experience. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I arrived in Perth at about 1.30 in the morning from England in 1992 with my aunt, whose daughter was living in, was in Australia at the time um, for a visit for a month. And uh, we arrived there and they asked what I got in the, in the bag. And I was, I was doing a couple of talks while I was over there and I brought a load of stuff for exchange. I had about four or five boxes of micromounts. And um, I'd already been through the process in England when I went through the, the first check-in with all what these little tiny specks in these boxes. But when I got to Australia, they, they were really, it's like your, your case, they were really interested in what I had. And I spent most of the next half an hour or so explaining what they were. <laughs> yeah, a similar thing fun. happened to me on the way home from uh, Tucson one time uh, in Sydney. And um, they were checking everybody's... Uh, baggage and whatever and 
I had to open up one of the boxes and I took something out and there was oohs and ahs and then they said, have you got more? <laughs> um, yes, do you want to see it? Yes, and then there were two or three others uh, coming around as well. So. Well, when, when, when Dick and I came back from um, North, uh, North Carolina in uh, 911, we, we were there when the, and we went up to Franklin and uh, we came back and we had, how many suitcases do you have, Dick? <laughs> uh, <No>. Several. <laughs> yeah. Several. Yeah. All yeah. the stuff from Sterling Hill. And uh, <laughs> they're all, all bubble wrapped. And we got them home and uh, we got the cases off the carousel and all the locks had been broken off and the bags were ripped open. And uh, the American security people, uh, Homeland Security, they call themselves, had been through yeah. all the bags, thought it was only rock, and just let them go through. But they were, all the bags were ripped, all the locks were off, everything. All right. Sorry. It's all right. It happens. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, probably my worst uh, experience was actually in Schiphol in the Netherlands. Frank, you probably know about that place. <laughs> and um, we, we flew in from, uh, I think it was a one hop to Singapore and then off to uh, Schiphol. And then we were catching a city hopper from there to Birmingham in England. And we had to, we got off our plane and we found out we had to go right the way over to the other side of, of Schiphol to catch the, the next flight. And it, so I'm just letting people in. And it was, um, there was not much time to do it. So we were racing along with two kids of, I think, uh, nine and seven in tow at the time. And I had uh, a box of specimens because I was doing a couple of talks over in the UK as well. And I had some crocolite in there. And uh, we went through a couple of uh, security areas and one in particular, we got stopped. And they obviously saw something in this box. And this very large Dutch lady, the security lady, and I mean very large, she was about six foot three and she was, that was both side, both ways, sideways as well. Um, she obviously had seen something and wanted to have a look inside. So I'm saying, let me help you. No, you don't touch, smack. <laughs> and, then, and then I said, please be careful. And she's pulling stuff out and then puts it all back and says, yeah, off you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, they didn't do damage sometimes. anything, which was good. So I was lucky. But crocoite is not one of those things that you want people... Oh, oh. Yeah, that was back in 94 right. I think um, so we've got a few additional people I haven't said hello to so David, Richard, Hink good Paul evening. good to see you, you with us evening, evening morning afternoon all <laughs> Bill good to see you nice and early morning, as well. Uh, Sheila, you've got your video working again. You're doing well now. Uh, Jane, good morning. Christina, good morning. Steve, good morning. Bonnie, morning. Quentin. Uh, we've got Patrick, and Gail, and Jim Glenn as well. Not with no video, but I'm assuming you three of you can all hear us <coughs> or hear and see us. I'm two page. <coughs> Second page. Uh, what are we up to? We're up to twenty nine. I'll just wait a couple more minutes and uh, here we go. <coughs> Evangeline. <coughs> Excuse me. Hello, David. Have you recovered? Me? I, I've, yeah. Yes, I've been a bit busy. Um, I still haven't caught up on all my emails. So I've sent Dick an email, but I've not actually read the response yet. You have had a response? I, no, I, yeah, I, I know I, I've had a response. I've not actually had a chance to read it yet. Oh, it's all right. I'm way, way behind on my emails. Yeah, yeah. I was going yeah. to send you a parcel later on this week, if that's okay. That's a fine, David. Yeah, whenever. With Martin's yeah. stuff as well? Yeah, put it all in one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we'll do. Let me know the cost and I'll... Well, I'll I don't think it's going to be that much. I mean, I've, um, it's international that gets expensive. Yeah. Depends on, yeah. depends on the weight. It's about, if, you, if you're using a courier, it's about un, under four quid for, 
for yeah, a kilo. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I did a 25 gram packet to um, David Bins today. Only a small oh, yeah. little, little thing. That cost me two pounds 45, I think. That was Royal Mail. That one. I got forced to use them, but oh, I may never get there. That's because it's too thick, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's yeah. under 30 grams. It should be better rate, but it's too thick. No, it won't go. It won't go for the letter. But well, it, it was. It was over. And it was, the the, jet, the 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 micro boxes won't go through the the um the the slide you know, the, the the scale thing we yeah. have to use. Mm. Let's go small packet. So a couple of light joiners just coming in. There's Colleen <laughs> and Frank. <clears throat> uh, just before we kick off as well. Um, a number of you joined the BMS symposium last weekend, which was good. Uh, and during the AJM, AJM, sorry, that's the Australian Journal of Mineralogy, the AGM, um, uh, somebody volunteered me to redo the uh, website. <laughs> so the bill right. is charged. <laughs> um, I have got it up and running now. In fact, we've put a redirect in so that if you actually go to the old website, it will take you straight through to the new one. Uh, that will teach you to make a suggestion, Steve. <laughs> yes, I know. Well, I didn't actually make a suggestion. Really. I, was, I was very quiet. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> uh, I was aware of, of your skills, David. Uh, thanks. Some of you have already had a look at it. Uh, for those that haven't, I'll just I'll quickly bring it up. It looks Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, really absolutely superb. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice and clean. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that was the <clears throat> to, to try and try and make it that way. So. Um, I, I've sent you some dates twelve minutes ago, actually, Steve. <clears throat> yeah. Thanks. Thanks, David. Um, I think Martin actually responded a little bit quicker to you. All right. Now, okay. So. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. That's fine. So uh, the. At the moment, the address is bms.mineralcollective.com. And uh, what I've suggested to Martin is, is to try and get the domain name of uh, British Micromance Society.com, which is uh, currently available. So uh, once we do that, we can, read, we can um, have it uh, as that as the domain, uh, rather than having it as a subdomain of, of my site. Uh, in the address box. It'll still be the same site behind the scenes, but it'll show differently. Um, I've tried to keep it fairly clean. So up here, we've just got about the society, uh, information <coughs> and membership, information on symposiums and some links. And the other links that were on the old site, I've embedded into uh, other parts. So if you want to look for occasional papers, then it's in as a category here. And what that does is, is it actually lists all of the all of the um, papers that are, sorry, it's a link, that's the, the post, L list uh, um, all of the papers that are available. Um, right. much <laughs> so I've kept it really simple and um, the intention is to uh, periodically put in some posts like this one here, which was one of the, the reference collection specimens. Um, Steve, your Linerite from the UK article I've put in here as well. And I'll pick occasionally pick ones out of the uh, newsletters and post them if you're interested in newsletters. Um, so we've got newsletters here. So all of the old. Nice. It looks brilliant. Yeah. So, sorry. Wrong. So much better than the thing I, I created. <laughs> Lovely clear picture. Yeah. Yeah, I've just noticed I've got a, a bit of an issue, actually, um, as you do. But, uh, Hello, in, it's my specimen. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it does say that. Yeah, um, that's all right. So under the about is where the back issues are available. So click on those. Um, the ones that are, are not yet available are listed up the top as currently available to members only. Oh, you managed so, to get them out, did you? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, um, yep. I'm actually hosting them on a site called box.com, 
which is right. a bit like um, uh, Google Drive or whatever. Uh, but I'll, I'll try and gather some more up for you. We've got a few more kicking around somewhere. Yeah, I'll, I'd probably need 101 to 104. because I've got them up there. Yeah, well, 104 is the last one we did, I think. Yes, or, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So, so they need to go on. And then yeah. the, the missing ones here, which I've just I've listed, but as currently we've got a bit of a bit of a problem with them. I've, I've got to I've, they've got to be scanned, and I haven't got a scanner. No, that's fine. Um, and then all of the other old ones are here, and they're actually worth looking at for anybody that hasn't seen them. So um, if you click on any one of these, it will big actually... doodle here. Sorry. Did you miss that? So. So this will actually give you the PDF copy of the of the um, the original newsletter, and there's lots of good information in there. So anyway, that's that's that. Wow. <coughs> very that's good, a, very good. good. All in one day. Uh, <laughs> which, which day do you rest on? <laughs> what, what's your day of rest? Um, he doesn't. Any, any day that doesn't end in Y. <laughs> yes, come back. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's good fun doing that sort of stuff. But what it does oh, you, oh, we, we really are grateful to you anyway. Oh, it's no problem. Yeah. If you, we don't have right. to you anymore. That's mm. cool. Let's do it. Oh, 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 Somebody news people. Bill, news. Bill who are you talking to? I might just mute him for a sec. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, we are 32. There's no new ones come in for the last couple of minutes. So um, we might kick off with the presentation. Oh, before I do, do I have a volunteer for two weeks' time? <laughs> crickets, crickets. Anybody on mute that's actually saying yes, yes, yes? And we can't hear them. Billy boy. I've got one oh. half prepared. If I can get if I can get it done and, and finished in time, it'll be a, a, about our local group. Well, two weeks. Right, about reckon, Norfolk. Yeah. You reckon? If I, can, if I can get it prepared in time, I should be able to. Do anything in Norfolk? Not a lot. That's why it won't be that many that many slides. <laughs> should be able to get I can it done. do something in a month. So uh, who is that? Um, I can, John Bitter. Bruce. 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 Oh, Bruce. I, I can do something in a month. Are you sure, Bruce? Yeah. All right, cool. Then it gives me time we'll... to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> so let me just make a note. I don't think Nine it's... days to think about it and one day to put it together. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> exactly. I've got several that I've done on on um, the on old old shows, old slideshows, but they need revamping and, and make them a little looking a bit better than they are at the moment. It's a, a fairly long job to do that, so Right. Let's let's go with that for the moment. If you need, uh, if you have any problems with that, Martin, let me know. Um, yeah, I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah. And we'll we'll work something out. Um, so haven't heard back from Gerhard yet. So he missed the uh, the one where he was supposed to be presenting a few weeks ago and um, has dropped off the radar a bit. So I might have to touch base with him separately as well. Okay. So. Uh, if everybody's ready, uh, if I can ask you once again just to mute and turn off your videos, that would be good. And we'll have a look at uranium in Lake Boga. So. There we go. Okay, so everybody can see my screen, I'm assuming. Uh, I've got the same problem I had last time with, I'll just minimize that. Okay, all right, so um, Lake Boga, some of you know that I've been putting together a collector's guide for Lake Boga, which is in progress at the moment, but takes a long time to actually get through this stuff. Uh, just to show where we're talking about, 
there's Australia down the bottom. Uh, this area of the screen is this little square down here. And um, we're in the state of Victoria. The uh, boundary of the state is this dotted line that runs up through here. Excuse me, Steve, but you're still showing in the middle of my screen, along with photo myself and etc. Uh, then you need to change your view to. Hang on, let me just stop this for a sec, guys. Um, yep. So, so up, up the top. Is, uh, eight. So what can you see now? I can see yourself plus um, there's a little, there's a few people up the top. Right. Did so, you, were you able, you weren't able to see the presentation? I was able to see most of it, but in the middle of it was showing these little photos. Ah, so, okay. Just move them across. You can drag them across to the side. Just for the arrow. Yeah, yeah just click on it and, and move it across. Yeah. Put your cursor on there. Oh, I got it, Steve. Yep. Okay, cool. His I wife. Think. His wife came to the rescue. Excellent. <laughs> 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 All right. Sorry for that. Sorry, Steve. Thank no, you. That's okay. So, so back to the slide here. So we've got the the dotted line here that separates Victoria from New South Wales, and this dotted line down the side which separates South Australia from Victoria. Um, and as it stands at the moment. People in Victoria, such as myself and, and a few others on the call, cannot go over here and cannot go over here because of COVID. So we're sort of locked into the state. Nor can we go down here or up here or over here or over here. But anyway, <laughs> um, Lake Boga itself is up in the northwest of the state and just southwest, of, southeast of uh, Swan Hill. Swan Hill sits about here somewhere. Um, and I'm down here in Ballarat. So this from Melbourne to Ballarat is about 110 kilometres, so you can you can work out roughly what the distance between those two is. A little bit of history about the quarry at Lake Boga. Uh, the first report that I could find was uh, a uh, an application by Tresco Minerals to extract mineral, and I think it was for um, irrigation channels, so it would have been uh, crushed rock for irrigation channels. Uh, there was some production from 1924 to 1927. It doesn't seem like the Tresco Minerals thing progressed too much. Uh, then it was very quiet until 1945 and then has been operated uh, continuously since that time by Toll, then by Light Thomas Lightfoot and then from 1958 the current operator Mawson's partnered with Lightfoot and then brought him out in 63 and Mawson's operate a number of quarries around the, the southwest, southeast of Australia, uh, around Victoria and southern New South Wales, and they provide uh, rock for concrete and road surfacing and lots of other things. The first reference to any minerals from Lake Boga was in 1925, and that was uh, amethyst diorite, which is obviously rock, and black tourmaline. And then in 1958, there was a, a a big uh, lot of excitation, I suppose, uh, where uranium was uh, detected from Lake Boga, and that was about four or five years after the first uh, find of uranium in Victoria, which was elsewhere. Um, just briefly on the geology, uh, the surrounding uh, areas are just sandy deposits. Uh, the granite uh, outcrop, which is fairly small, in itself is, is the only solid rock in the district and is very similar to um, nearby Witcher Proof and Pyramid Hill, particularly in, in terms of some of the miner mineralogy as well. And if you want more information on the geology, then um, Bill Birch did a, a, a really good uh, article on that in 1993. And I can, I can provide the references to this if anybody needs it. It's a Devonian uh, granite and has been dated at, at uh, just under 400 million years ago. And myrolytic cavities, which is where the crystals actually occur, uh, can be very small up to quite large. Um, I must admit when 
in my early days, I thought my analytic cavities were always always small, but um, when you see the ones at Lake Boga, they certainly aren't. It has four type locality minerals, two of which have uranium in them, and the type locality like type locality minerals are bleasdaleite, kunatite, Lake Bogoite, and aurichite. And of those, aurichite is probably the commonest, <coughs> although common is a, a relative term. It's only it was only found in one uh, fairly small area of the quarry and was known colloquially as aurichite corner. The other three are extremely rare indeed. But just having a quick look at uh, the uranium ones, so Lake Bogoite itself, uh, although it says the description is that it's lustrous lemon yellow blocky to short prismatic crystals, they can be this more sort of amber or almost a root beer sort of colour. Um, this was actually from a second find. Uh, and this is another view of the same specimen. Uh, the interesting thing with this particular specimen is that it has around about 30 individual crystals on it. It is a micro, so they're very small crystals. But um, the original description of Lake Bogoite said that there were only about five or six specimens which had a total of about 35 crystals. So this particular specimen on its own has got nearly as many crystals as was known with the original occurrence. Excuse me. <coughs> and the uh, this specimen was found by found by Margaret Brown, uh, the late Margaret Brown from Utuga. <coughs> Ulrichite um, was initially found in uh, the nineteen eighties by members of the Bendigo Group, the Bendigo uh, Mineral Club, and uh, forms either. Um, pale apple green to a deeper green such as this one, uh, usually opaque, sometimes trans translucent or transparent, but very small crystals. And can occur with a range of other minerals. This particular one has, has got some quite nice apatite crystals. You can see the, the face of the apatite there, another one up back here. But it also occurs with a lot of the other secondary uh, ph phosphates, particularly copper phosphates, and other minerals. Okay, so all of the uranium, and I've included a couple of non-uranium ones that are radioactive uh, minerals that occur at Boga. So the four main ones are meta, meta natro autonite, which is previous, previously called sodium autonite, saleite, torbonite, and metatorbonite as well as aurichite and lake bogite. And then uraninite is uh, thought to be the source of uh, the, sorry, I just need to admit Trevor Boyd. Um, uh, uraninite is thought to be the source of the uranium in the secondary uh, phosphates. And then there is also monazite, sherylite and hutonite, all recorded which are all monazite group minerals. They contain, or the monazites in particular, contain um, as much as 10% uranium, but the general feeling is that the uranium is pretty, pretty well locked up in these minerals and isn't going to be the source of the uranium for the other species. Now on top of that, if you look at Mindat, you'll see autonite, uh, sorry, you won't see, you'll see meta-autonite. It's an Alex Earl photo of an old specimen um, from an old collection and is more likely to be either a metanatural meta autonite or a saleite, and I think probably the former. I doubt that it's been analysed. And autonite was, was recorded early on, but every specimen that was um, analysed in subsequent times has been shown to be one of these two as well. So, <clears throat> metanatural autonite uh, generally is a bright lemon yellow, can be translucent, uh, but also can be fairly opaque and you get a pearly sort of a luster such as this one. Very highly fluorescent. Now this one's got a little bit of torbonite, not a very good crystal, but a little bit of torbonite sitting in the background. It can be quite hard to distinguish between this and saleite, but there are a few tips. That's that same specimen under uh, convoy, so long wave UV. 
and it's it's quite hard to capture because it's so intense you have to really back it off uh, so <coughs> another specimen of <coughs> excuse me uh, meta natro autonote and one of the characteristics things here is sort of a curved edges of crystals which you can see on this one <coughs> excuse me and that's that same specimen uh, although a different um, width of view uh, under UV. Saleyite is probably the one that is the, the best known by collectors of the two although it may not necessarily be the most common it, it just uh, appears that way and usually they've got a lemon, lemon yellow or greenish yellow appearance and are most likely to be transparent or translucent and again highly fluorescent so there's that same specimen under UV <coughs> um, here's a, a more of a blocky uh, saleyite crystal it's quite a bit thicker and associated with thin plates of torquenote and again under UV <clears throat> and this is one of my um, one of my favorite ones it's very nicely formed uh, crystal um, you can see along this edge here see almost like striations on on that edge this could be an intergrowth so one of the things that makes it even harder to determine between the two <clears throat> is that not only do they occur uh, in, as themselves, but they can also occur as intergrowths with one another. And that's characteristic of one of the, um, the signs that it could be an intergrowth with metanatron autonite. So probably zoned in their growth as well. And you can see it a bit more clearly in that uh, UV photo. This is an unusual one and it's, in, it's elongated in, in one direction. They normally uh, equant um, uh, tabular or, or platy crystals <clears throat> and again it's it's probably got metanatro autonite rims which is again that same sort of look that you could see before but this is definitely sodiite and again under under UV <clears throat> um, uh, another one with more sort of blocky crystals but with very thin plates of torbanite and I've got this one here in particular because as you can see there are little sort of starbursts of a black material here which possibly it hasn't been analyzed it's very small that's only 2.5 millimeters across from there to there but this may be uraninite or it may be something else and it's um, it's in between the torbanite uh, crystals <coughs> excuse me now torbanite itself is generally um, a deep emerald green and it's going to be uh, transparent translucent you can see this one here you can actually see the underlying uh, material which is quite uh, quite easy to pick up and this is quite a blocky crystal <clears throat> more of a platy habit but with multiple crystals sort of stacked together and that's just a mass of, of uh, thin plates and then we have metatorbonite now one of the issues here is that metatorbonite um, can actually be transparent but it's usually opaque and so there is occasionally discussions about whether or not torbanite even such as this is actually metatorbanite um, or whether it's just the ones that are more opaque and I don't think there's been a lot of work done but there's not much difference in terms of the the water in the um, structure so you can see here metatorbanite's 0.8 but torbanite is 0.12 so um, not a lot of difference in terms of the amount of water in there <clears throat> uh, but these ones are clearly metatorbanite and this one is a slightly different hue uh, it looks too blue when you look at it in the photo but it is the actual color which is um, 
it is very unusual compared to the other ones. Most of them are that, that sort of more green. And this one with the uh, muscovite mica. And I've included fluorapatite in the list, even though it's not truly a, a uranium mineral, but um, it does have a, a, a the, the fluorapatite at Lake Berger does have a lot of uranium in it. So as the fluorapatite breaks down <coughs> and releases the phosphate ions, it probably also releases the uranium into the solution as well. And then the uranium phosphate minerals are, are able to form. So fluorapatite, uh, it, it forms as either tabular or prismatic hexagonal crystals. Uh, you can see that some of these ones here are sort of shorter crystals. And it can be colourless, pink, purple, blue, grey, green. And fluoresces either orange or brown. Again, this is under um, long wave UV. So that's that same specimen. And you can see some zoning in there as well. Some of the, the areas are, are paler than, than others. This is a, a nice pink, bit more tabular uh, fluorapatite. And it's the axis runs through that way. So we've got the hexagonal face here and here. And that one again under uh, UV. We've got a nice pale blue one. This one's got a, a couple of modified corners on the um, the pinacoid. So you've got a flat pinacoid there and you've got sort of prism faces. But uh, quite a nice pale blue. So um, the, the last one, this one I think is a an intergrowth of all three of three of the uh, uranium phosphates. The center area here appears to be torbonite, then um, saleite around it, and then capped off with metanatrowatonite. And again, you can see this characteristic sort of edge uh, that the metanatrowatonite gets. This specimen is also very highly fluorescent. And that is the end of the presentation. So it's a fairly short one. Um, if you want to unmute yourselves and put your videos back on and I'll take any questions. So I was just going to comment um, on the fluorapatites uh, as a source of uranium and phosphates. Um, I've, in the aurochites I've seen, um, often I'll find them either in a cavity where a fluorapatite has been or yes. in the adjacent cavity. So I've always considered them a the fluorapatite as a source of the phosphate, but it's interesting to think that it might also be the source of the uranium as well. Yeah, well, the, the, the general consensus is that it's either, uh, it's possibly got um, inclusions of uranium like crystals, tiny crystals as well. So as it right. breaks down, it can release that. Yeah, into that makes system. sense. <clears throat> Um, we've got a bit of background noise on somebody's microphone. I'm not sure whose, but oh, it's gone. <laughs> All right. Um, any other questions or comments? Uh, yes, David. Listen, uh, UV picture has been taken by uh, long wave or short wave? Uh, this is all long wave. This is just ah, okay. Just convoy. Ah, perfect. Uh, I have also that one. Yeah. It's a really good one. Yeah, I, d I don't have a strong enough shortwave to, to be able to take those sort of mm -hmm. photos. Not with the setup that I've got anyway. Thanks. Is, is collecting still, still possible there? Um, Yes-ish. So um, the, the issue is not so much whether or not you can get in. Obviously right now we can't because of the... Um, the COVID situation. Sorry, just, just hang on a second, please. Um, can, whoever's got the background noise, can they please? I might just mute everybody. Oops. Oh no, we, we stopped. Okay, sorry, Bruce. <coughs> um, yeah, the, uh, the quarry itself, the, the owners are not averse to letting particularly societies or clubs in. Uh, but the the main issue is that the most productive area has already been quarried away. Um, 
that a lot of the uh, phosphate minerals, and there's, there's a lot more than just the uranium phosphates, <clears throat> there's a whole suite of other copper and other um, uh, cations, but they tended to occur at the top of the, the dome of the, the granite. And so the deeper you go, you still get myrolytic cavities, but it tends to be the the larger crystals of smoky quartz and feldspars and so on, and some of the um, the apatites. You, know, you do get some quite large apatites there. Uh, so the hope is that there's one area that uh, sort of had some huts on it at one stage, that they might quarry back towards that area and might expose some more of the the rarer. Uh, secondary sort of uh, species so it's a watch the space I think yeah so don't expect any any more overkite coming out in the near future <laughs> probably not no um, but overkite there's, there's a fair bit that is available through collectors anyway because it was quite abundant in the one small area and uh, a lot of it was collected yeah. um, I do have one small piece but it just photographs terrible. <laughs> I've never gotten a good picture of it. Uh, I probably have a few more than one. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments? I was just look, looking at the uh, c comparison between things like Heinrichite from um, Schmiedestollen and um, in, in Germany in the Black Forest and that was that's very much straight, very similar to the so the, some of the salio. Uh, that's that's an arsenate, isn't it, Martin? It fluoresces though as well, the same oh, colour, near enough. Yeah. yeah. But it's a, it's a uranium dump. There's all there's all sorts of stuff yeah. on it. <clears throat> well, I know that um, there's a certain person on the call today that would dearly love to be in the the quarry with the UV torch at night. And that being Paul yep. Bergen. He sure would. <laughs> Where is he? He's, he's <laughs> fell asleep, I think. I'm I'm no, always up on the top right. But yeah we've, we've talked about that from time to time <laughs> yeah so any other questions or comments just lovely crystals oh yeah. thank, yeah. thank you Sheila uh, that's all lovely photos on matrix yeah it's stunning yeah it's crazy um some pretty old granite is not a bit better than that isn't it Steve <laughs> <clears throat> it's a pity we don't have more of it here. So we've we've got uh, we've got plenty of it. It's just so the the cavities are just so small. Yeah, we've we've got uh, there are the three quarries that I mentioned. So Lake Boga, Witchy Proof, and Pyramid yeah. Hill. Lake Boga yeah. was certainly the the best one in terms of the occurrence of of the uh, phosphates and so on. But Witchy Proof has two type locality minerals as well, both phosphates. Uh, that's selenite and Witchy Proofite. Um, Pyramid Hill was probably the poor cousin of the three. Um, it does have a few uh, phosphates, it does have a staleite, uh, it does have fluorapatites and there's a couple of others but, but most of the Pyramid Hill stuff, stuff was smoky quartz tourmalines and not, uh. much, not much else. Um, but they're all, they were all operated by Mawson's uh, there's probably less chance of getting anything in Witchy Proof or Pyramid Hill because they're sort of more worked out. Boga is still probably the, the, the best one to actually go to. Not that yeah. I'm not going to try getting into the others anyway, just have a look, which we'll do at some point in time. And then there's a few other granites um, dotted around that same sort of latitude, but they do not have the same sort of mineralogy as these ones. We've got plenty of granite about it. There's nothing. It's all on contact, most of it. With, with the uh, with the host, you know, with the, the other rock. It's um, there's not much in the granite itself. I, the the, the meritic stuff. What Steve has found up in Scotland, and um, we've all a few of us got stuff from it. They're, they're really nice crystals of different things in there, but they are just so that the cavities are just so small. You need a I think a times twenty lens to get anything out of them. Rich has been playing around with some this last week or two and getting one or two reasonable photographs out of them. But um, whenever I try, they're just so small, my, my lens won't, won't touch them. Yeah, well, I think the Lake Boga uh, one's uh, most part are okay. 
the reasonable size crystals. Yeah. So the the largest saleyite I've seen from there was about fifteen mil long. So that's that's a reasonable size. <laughs> so yeah. The, um, they, they, they pale in comparison to the stuff from the Ranger mine, which kind of spoils it for everybody, you know. <laughs> Woohoo, I got a crystal, this is 10 mils right. Oh, wait, Ranger. Yeah, okay. but, but just as intense in terms of, of colour. So if you can actually shine a torch at one of the other side of the room, even a micro, and you will, like, if you drop it on the carpet, there's no issue, you'll find it. Yeah. Just put the lights off. Well, actually, don't even turn the light off. Just put your torch on, and it just goes wham. And you can shine the <coughs> convoys at sub millimeter crystals and they'll just brighten light up and you know exactly yeah. where they are so. yeah. Yeah. Uh, my, my uh, one of the things that does worry me about them is um some of the crystals are fairly poorly formed and um prone to disintegration as they dehydrate so um when i was unpacking a box of rocks at one stage there's all this very pale yellow powder all over the rocks where the saliate used to be. I very <laughs> carefully cleaned everything up and threw it out. Mm -hmm. Inhaling new radi radioactive dust doesn't sound like a, a fun weekend to me. <laughs> no, I totally agree. Oh, well, if there is nothing else, it's probably a, an early finish. Early night, yeah. Can I ask you a question about the convoy lights? Yes, sure. Uh, are they only available in long wave? Uh, at this stage, yes. 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 There are some and prototypes. Only, uh, of, there are some <coughs> prototypes on the market at the moment. Um, somebody's got one in Hong Kong. I think they've made one, but it's uh, very, very expensive. Yeah, it's the LEDs at, at the moment. The LEDs on short wave are, are not yeah. quite there yet, so. That'll be a year or two before they get there, I think. Yep. Uh, There's plenty of people who'll sell you one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. In the US, um, I'm kind of one of the guys who sells them. <clears throat> Was that Patrick? That's me, yep. Cool. S2, uh, the C8. I got Would a you new sell one the shortwave ones? ones? No, there's no. Well, I, I do. I do. Uh, I mean, regular uh, mercury vapor. Um, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I got big 190 watt things that the, the little five yeah, watt. Yeah, but, but not, I don't want to. I just wanted to mention it. You guys are talking about who you can get them from, but I don't want to monopolize this video. There's um, a couple of uh, Facebook groups that um, where some guys are doing quite a bit of experimentation with the yeah. chips that are coming out, building your own from scratch and their own drivers and everything. It's fascinating yeah, think, to watch. So, I think 275 is one of the common um, uh, yeah. wavelengths that is currently kind of up, down, in short wave area. I've seen 222 nanometer eczema bulbs yes. that are being used for germicidal COVID-19 sterilization. Hoya I'd like filters to see if those come up as a though. wand yeah. that you could use. Yeah, the, if you try to filter it, if you try to filter no it idea. with I mean, a Hoya, just... it won't work. Yeah, the problem's always been the glass. It's mm -hmm. expensive compared to the, yeah. the light source. Oh, yeah, I think fun. with eczema, there's a few different wavelengths that those are uh, available in. But 222, I have heard of that as well. Yeah. But, you know, they're selling them for COVID-19 sterilization for spaces, you know, big, big panels and stuff. So uh, Might be some interesting seen... colors come out of things, you know. That would be interesting, yeah, like if, they, if they can develop it as a, a fourth or fifth uh, wavelength available in UV. Mm -hmm. uh, be pretty it, dangerous. it could be it could be did i hear uh, the word dangerous <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, i surely. thought i heard i thought i heard 222 is actually uh less dangerous it doesn't uh, disrupt dna um like the 254 does i thought i heard that yes i think it's one of those things where there's probably a lot of misinformation as as much as information out there. 
Probably right. Too uh, new. Yeah, I think so. I think what we'll, we'll, we'll have to do from a collective perspective is just sit back and wait and see what the technology and the exper experimentation uh, comes up with and then see, how, see what that does to the cost. But um, it, it would be nice to have something as powerful as a convoy under short wave or medium wave or whatever. But um, it's not there yet, so we'll have to wait. You can certainly vouch for 254 being dangerous. I've given myself one heck of a sunburn and eye burn from not being uh, careful. That's not good. That's not good at all. All right. Well, if that's it, um, thank you very, very much nice. for attending, guys. And thank you very much for the talk. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. And then very much. hopefully Martin will be ready much. in two weeks' time. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll get work on it. Get it sorted out. Yeah. All right. Thank you all. Thanks, Chief. Oh, yeah. 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 Cheers, guys. Bye. 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 Cheers, everyone. I got that bug and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all around. With a Geiger counter in my hand. I'm going out to take me some government land. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Well, I had a talk with the AEC and they brought out some maps that looked good to me. And one showed me a spot he said he knowed. So I straddled my Jeep and headed down the road. I reckon I drove about a hundred miles down a bumpy road out through the wilds. When all of a sudden I bounced to a stop at the foot of a mountain, didn't have no top. Uranium fever has done and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all around. With a Geiger counter in my hand. I'm going out to take me some government land. Uranium fever. Fever has gone and got me down. Well, I took the Geiger and I started to climb right up to the top where I thought I'd find a hunk of rock that'd make it click just like I'd read about Vernon Pick. On the second day, I made the top, and I'm telling you, Steve, I was ready to stop. The only clicking that I heard that day was the bones in my back that had gone astray. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever, it's spreading all around. With a Geiger counter in my hand I'm going out to stake me some government land Uranium fever has gone and got me down well, you pack up your things, you head out again Into some unknown spot where nobody's been You reach the spot where your fortune lies You find it's been staked by 17 other guys Well, I ain't kidding, I ain't gonna quit That bug's done caught me and I've been bit So with a Geiger counter and a pick in my hand I'll keep right on staking that government land Uranium fever has gone and got me down Uranium fever is spreading all around with a Geiger counter in my hand I'm going out to stake me some government land Uranium fever has gone and got me down